Ladies and gentlemen, we are unmuted and ready to go. Today is August 6, 2013, and this is the Kane and Kale Show, episode 92, where we learn to be better artists. Is it 92? I think it is 92. 92, where we learn to be better artists. I'm your host, Kane Lafferty, and today we are going to be painting the sexy gymnast girl that I posted on Facebook. And speaking of that, we need to take a stroll down the lovely lane, because we got some new, awesome submissions by people like you. Lovely viewers like you. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now, shall we? Whoa! Dang, we got a ton of stuff. Okay, I gotta start way down here. Uh, so as usual, I want to say thank you to everyone who has been submitting their amazing artwork. I hope that my tutorials and our joint study sessions have been being beneficial to your artistic skills, and it looks like we are succeeding. So, yes, once again, thank you to everyone who has submitted their awesome stuff. Oh, look at this Lulu. It's so cool. Oh, it makes me so happy. <laughs> and uh, please continue to do so. People watching on YouTube, if you want to contribute your awesome work, the link to the Facebook is down in the description. Please consider doing so. Um, and with all that out of the way, I think we'll go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. And I'm going to dub this Capturing Character. Capturing the initial character that you have in a concept, right? Because, as you can see, we have our lovely gymnast girl here, which is actually based off of an old painting that I did, which is called Runner Girl. This was an experiment that I did with uh, not only drawing sexy ladies, but with drawing, like, reflected light coming from, you know, like a light source. Like, the sun is coming from this way, shining down, and then reflecting off of the orange light source, or the orange truck that's on the other side of her. And I wanted to kind of play around with what the reflection of the light would do. So that was fun. Of course, I mean, I look at this now and it's like, eh, I could do that a lot better. But regardless, we're just uh, redrawing this girl here. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to try to capture uh, the character of her, of her face and just uh, what we're going for. So uh, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is, A, you're probably wondering how I even got to this point, and... For your entertainment, I did, in fact, time-lapse and everything. So let's go ahead and get started on that, and I'll show you, and I'll talk about what I'm doing as I go. All right, so this thing goes for about three minutes. Okay, so the first thing that I really like to do when I start drawing people and drawing faces is I usually work, again, with a light color, and I really enjoyed drawing with the chalk brush. And for those of you who are interested in getting my brushes, I have those also in the link down below. So the first thing that I do is uh, I just drew the face, kind of like that. And uh, usually I tell people not to start with drawing the face and the head, but because this is like a portrait type thing, uh, I decided that, you know, when I do stuff like this, when I'm focusing on the face, I usually tend to draw everything outward from it. But if you're drawing like any sort of action-y type of thing or any, anything with an action in it, you don't want to start from the head because it will absolutely jack you up. So anyway, um, yeah, continuing. So you'll notice very quickly that the face that we are coming up with over here is a little bit different than the one that we end up having. And you'll see the, the face change, or like the character changes as I begin to paint. And this is something that I always run into. And uh, I'm going to show you guys, or I guess we're going to be doing a little bit of a study session on how to make sure we retain the original character that we saw in the sketch. So, yes, yes. And if you have any questions today, I would like to invite you to ask any questions. You don't need to wait for question catapults at the end. You can ask at any time. So basically what I'm doing here is um, I just created the sketch. And as you can see over here, I've got everything just like the lines are on a background layer, right? Or not background. The lines are on a flat layer on the top, and I've just set those to multiply, right? And now what I'm doing is I'm dropping in the color and the mask right behind it. This is kind of a quick kind of hack and slash way to do it. But I really like doing it when I'm just doing faces like this because I end up painting over everything anyway. So um, I try not to worry too much about stuff. I just drop in the basic colors for what I want, and the mask is already done, and then we can just move on from there. So yeah, uh, the first things that I like to do are uh, I, I lay in like some general values for the the skin and the hair. As you can see, I kind of leave like a little bit of like a, a light shining through there. So it's like okay, this is where I want the highlight of the hair to go through. And it just helps to remind me, right? And now I'm just adding in little details, like I'm darkening her eyes, adding in the eyelashes. And then a big, big thing that I really like to do here is um, I'm going back into the skin. I'm going back into the skin layer, and I'm adding red to it in places like the cheeks, the nose, the shoulders. There's just like all kinds of places where it looks really nice to pigment the skin, right? It shouldn't all just be like one flat color on the lips too. 
So that's basically what I'm doing here. And now I'm going to start moving into the paint over layer. So this is basically, as you can see, I created another layer over top of everything. This is the OP layer, which is overpowered because it goes over everything and it reigns in its kingdom. And now I'm going to begin painting over top of this and start trying to get a little bit of uh, the character that's residing in here. Now, I'm really liking this. Like this girl that I'm seeing in here, this is what I want to carry through, right? But you'll watch very quickly as I start to add extra like painting to it, I'll like start accentuating the cheekbones and I'll start doing little things. And what this is going to do is it's going to change um, the overall like facial structure of the character. It's also going to make her look a little bit older too. So, um, you know, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you're going for. But personally, I saw like like the character that I wanted, I saw in there, right? It's actually pretty close to what we have here. Um, but yeah, I think really the biggest thing that changed it was when we shaded the cheek in. And again, this girl is still pretty, right? I still like this girl, but it's not the same as the one that we had before. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of compare and contrast and try to do a couple different paintings, and then we'll see what we come up with at the end, and we'll see if indeed the original character was ready to go or if we like the new one. So I think I'm just going to be winding down here. Yeah, so this is where we are currently. Let's go ahead and close that down. So what's really, really cool is because I started doing everything on the OP layer, right? All I have to do to get back to my original character that I saw is just do that, right? Is just take it away, right? You can see very clearly how they have almost very, very similar facial structures. And it always helps to squint your eyes when you're doing this because, you know, you'll see where the eyes are. Like if you look closely at this face, you'll see, you know, the eyes, the nose, and you get the basic reads, right? And then we go from here. And then you'll notice the reads are a little bit different. I think one of the biggest things that's happening here is accentuating the cheekbone. It made her look a little bit older. Uh, I, I brought the face in a little bit. I slimmed it up and I changed that eye. Changed the eye over here. I brought the eyes in a little bit closer. So, um, yeah. I mean, like I said, still sexy. But we're going to see if we can get that original character. A little bit more younger looking one. So, let us go ahead and get started. A uh, question coming in from Josh Strock. He's asking if I played in a band because I play guitar. I did actually used to be in a band. Uh, it was actually from Utah, where I'm living again. I moved back here. But currently, I am not. I just play guitar for fun, for my own amusement. All right. So basically, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to create another OP layer. This will be called OP2. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started on just trying to capture this face. And I'll show you a couple other tricks that I like to do. So you'll notice very quickly, um, one of the biggest things that I like to do when I'm painting faces is when I start going into the shadows, I like to use a lot of red, right? Because you'll notice like this red in here looks much more lively. And then you go to the, kind of this gray and it's kind of like, ee, you know, kind of looks nasty by contrast. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get plenty of red. So what I'm going to do first off so I'm going to start just adding in some red to where that gray was, right? And this nose is a little bit funky looking, so we're going to have to <laughs> we're going to have to fix that. We're going to have to fix that stat because uh, that nose looks a little bit deformed. In fact, I wonder if there's an old sketch that I have. Where's that? Where's that sketch? The original sketch? Uh, no, that's the way the nose looked there too. All right, so let's go ahead and just continue with the OP2 layer. So the biggest thing that I like to kind of knock out first off is the nose, right? The nose is the biggest thing for me because it's kind of a, it's a big challenge. And so I usually like to paint that out first. And um, you'll notice I'm kind of zooming in closely to do this, but I don't know. Like I like zooming in closely because it kind of lets you get the detail work. But honestly, when I start painting, I like to just work with broad strokes, broad strokes. Because remember, it's all about when you squint your eyes, you can see the character, right? You can see her finished. And now all you're doing is you're just preserving those values, right? It's almost like the less, like less is more in this case. I found is is very much, um, very much the uh, the fact of the matter, right? <laughs> That's what's going on. You know, the the less you can do to kind of paint this in, and notice just like the subtleties. Notice the subtleties that I'm working with, just to kind of get a little bit of you know roundness on that cheek, right? A little bit of roundness on that cheek, and just the smallest little changes will affect the face in great and many ways. Great and many ways. So yeah, I'm just gonna kinda throw this stuff in, see how I like it. And what's really cool about it 
is if it looks a little weird, then I can just kind of like erase it a little bit and kind of take it back to what it was and be like, oh, okay, that's, what, you know, all I'm doing is I'm just erasing the OP layer, the overpowered layer. So um, just pay attention because very quickly you'll start to notice that once you get to the stage or you're laying in colors, like notice how I put this light underneath the nose, it immediately like rounds it underneath, right? This creates the underside of the nose. And very quickly you'll start to understand that it almost becomes like you're sculpting. It almost feels, I mean, this is the way that I've related it to people, is I just, I feel like I'm sculpting by the time I get to this point. You know, I, I don't feel like I'm painting necessarily. I almost feel like I'm working in a 3D space. And this is something that only recently kind of dawned on me or just kind of came to me. So if you don't feel like, like, uh, like you're at that point right now, don't worry, because it'll, it'll come to you. The, the key factor is, is that you practice and practice and practice. And really the best thing to do, like I drew this face kind of just from making it up, but the best way to practice like drawing faces and the structure of faces, and even this face is not exactly anatomically correct, right? Like there's a lot of like exaggeration, like the nose is really like like crazy and the lips are like, they got the classic comic book, almost duck lip thing going on. But, um, but I kind of like that, right? I like a little bit of exaggeration, like just to that point where it's still believable that this person could almost exist. You know, and then just a little bit of that character, you know, like I really like just a slight bit of exaggeration. I think it's really, really fun and it kind of brings you into my world, right? <laughs> this is how I see people. So, um, yeah, I'd encourage you to just have fun, study real life, study real life and then, you know, take it to the next level, you know, figure out what you like about real life and then exaggerate it. That's what I really like doing. And for me, what I really like to do, what I like to try to make sure that I get in each of my drawings, in each of my paintings, is just the sense of this character, like, is real, you know? This character is not just like some Barbie face, just like stuck on there with like a straight mouth and like open eyes, just like looking at you like a, without a soul. You know, this person has feelings, you know, this person comes from somewhere, this person has a story. And, uh, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. Let me know if I'm failing or not, you guys might think opposite, but uh, <laughs> that's my goal. And uh, while I'm saying I'm not perfect at it yet, that's something that I constantly strive to do. It's like, what, what makes this character different? I, I really believe that you can capture beauty in a face of just like almost any proportion, you know, like every, you know, there's all these different types of like beauty that you can capture. And I guess that's something that's always intrigued me. And while, like I said, I'm not a master at it, um, I do know some tricks. I do, I do know some tricks that come in handy when I'm uh, drawing things like the splashes for League of Legends and I gotta draw sexy ladies. But um, yeah, I really like just capturing the uniqueness, right? The uniqueness of each face. So yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, the biggest thing that I'm going to be doing while I'm doing this is just constantly switching back and forth between this OP layer and making sure that everything is working properly. And so far, it looks like it did. So, we're on a good, good track. Good track so far. Keep it up. Keep it up. So, it's good. It's good. But, yeah. I'm curious to know how your guys' week has been going. Please let me know. It's another lovely Tuesday. I love being able to like ask people how they're doing. You know? I wasn't able to do that before. But now that we have live studio audience in Kenan's room, Kenan's dojo. See, like little things like that. Like, see the way that I painted that cheek? I'm like, oh, I don't like that. So it's really easy to go back. And all I gotta do is just erase it. Whoop, whoop. Maybe, maybe it won't be that easy. <laughs> I like a little bit, I think her cheek is a little bit more pushed in. And I think what I like to do here is I like to not, you know, if it looks good there, then I'll almost just like go with it, you know? It's almost like I kind of suspend reality for a second and just say, okay, it looks good as it is. All I got to do is just blend it. You know what I mean? All right, so let's add a little bit more red down here. Again, biggest thing that I'm doing right now is just adding red. Adding red. Constantly, constantly adding red. It's kind of making the face feel more alive. It's alive.
But yeah, let me make sure I'm not missing anything super important over here. Oh, whoop. Nose. The nose knows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Getting a little too excited there. Gotta relax. Chillax. Let's go ahead and throw on a little bit of that there. A little bit more darkness under the eyes. Mm. It's not bad. Going back and forth. Okay, that looks good. Looks good. Losing a little something there. <laughs> Hmm. Kobe's asking about, do I know of anywhere in Utah for life studies? Yeah, there's tons of places to go around uh, to do, like, life studies and draw draw people. Uh, of which places names are escaping me right now because I haven't actually, I haven't been to any of them. But I do know they exist. They're out there. Places in, uh, places in Provo, I think. There's lots of places. You just gotta, just gotta get out there and find them. Plenty of places to learn. Alright, yeah, I'm liking this a lot more. Oh, and another thing that you guys will notice that I do a lot is I like to flip the canvas, right? Because what's interesting is I almost feel like I'm, I'm creating a person while I'm doing this, right? I'm drawing their face. I'm creating, you know, their life, their story and all this. Well, maybe not that crazy, but not that wacky. But <laughs> I'm creating this person, right? So what's interesting is this face is constantly changing with the slightest little bit of just like paint and just the little flick of the wrist, right? You're changing this person, you're changing this face. So what's very interesting is that you have to constantly kind of flip it around to get a fresh new pair of eyes on it. And what's very interesting is that uh, I've noticed that when I'm painting something and, and then I'm like, oh, that looks kind of nice, and then I flip it. And I'm like, whoa, and then you see all the problems and you take care of them, and then you flip it back around. It's almost like it looks even better, right? Because before you thought it looked good, but now it looks even better. And that's exactly how I felt about this when I turned it around. I was like, whoa, this looks really good. This looks really nice. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. And this might be kind of like, a, if there's a weakness of mine, or I was talking about, you know, just kind of following what's there, right? The value's laid in, and I just follow it, right? I think the weakness that might fall into this is the fact of, I don't know, like, I feel like I might not be able to get the same amount of character uh, in a super refined state. You know what I mean? Like, if I were to refine this face to almost photorealisticness, uh, I feel like that is the challenge that I have right now, right? Like, I can't like, I need to get better at that, if that makes sense. <laughs> I can take it to, you know, a point where it's still pretty painterly, but you can see it, right? And you're like, ooh, that's that's really cool. But as far as, okay, now finish it up. You know, now finish it. Make it look absolutely, completely real. Uh, that is still a challenge for me. Still a big challenge. And to be honest, um, I mean, it's a challenge, and I don't really like doing it. I'm the kind of guy where I'm pretty, I'm a, I have simple taste, right? So it's like, as much as I need to do to get it done and, and give the feeling that it needs to give, right? That's good enough for me. And case in point is the comic, right? My whole goal for the comic is to, you know, not only deliver a quality experience as far as storytelling, but I knew that drawing these panels and drawing these characters over and over and over again was going to get very, very, very tough, right? If they weren't designed in a way where I could draw them quickly. So, um, and the same thing with the backgrounds, right? Uh, my mentality with the backgrounds was just enough detail so you know what's going on, and it looks nice, right? And then nothing more, right? So that's that's kind of my mentality with these types of things. I, I like to just, uh, I almost just like, uh, you could attribute it to my ADD, right? It's like I fin I'm getting halfway through something, and I'm like, ooh, and then I get this other idea that I really want to go do, right? And then I want to go try that. So yeah, this is really, really fun. And uh, another thing that, that's really important, guys, when you're drawing faces and painting, and I've said this before, is reflected light. Remember when we were talking about ambient occlusion and just the way that everything around you just affects 
what's happening when you're lighting something. You'll notice that you know we're surrounded by a very bright background. So what I'm going to do is on the edges of the hair where it's turning like around the other way, I'm going to start adding in some lighter parts to it, right? And what this is going to do is it's going to turn the head, right? It's going to turn the plane of the hair. So it's almost like it goes light, dark, right? Light, dark, and then back to light. And that gives you the impression that it is existing in a 3D world. In a world. Anyway, so um, yeah, don't forget that reflected light because that's a big thing. Like when I learned about reflected light and like my old coworker Andrew Young, he, he said it, he said it best, and this is what got me interested in it. He's like the only difference between something that's cartoony and realistic is reflected light. Once you start adding in reflected light, it doesn't matter what style it is; it immediately becomes more believable. So um, and it doesn't even have to be dead perfect, right? It doesn't even have to be even remotely perfect. Just any sort of reflected something happening there, like a change of color, it'll work. So. I encourage you to try it out. Try, try out some reflected light for yourself. See how it makes you feel. I know that it makes me feel happy. So, we run with that. Okay, so I'm definitely liking this girl a lot. I like this girl a lot, a lot, a lot. See, and look at that. Look at how little I'm doing. Just tiny little changes as opposed to this one, right? See what we did there? There's a whole lot of painting, right? We painted the whole entire cheeks and we sharpened that cheekbone. And uh, this might be a good lesson to keep in mind for, you know, uh, creating the age of your characters, right? A bit like in how little you have to do, right? To go from this to that, right? Very, very interesting. Is it not? But yeah, the biggest things that I would say attributed to making this one look older is a uh, slimmer, slimmer face, more accentuated cheek, and jaw bones, or more so the cheek, right? And uh, what else? Just like the eyes a little bit closer together. It's very, very interesting. It still baffles me as to how exactly that works. But um, I, don't know, I guess it just baffles me as how you can like create a face and then change the person, of who, change who it is, just very, very quickly. You know, just by a couple simple paint strokes. You must. Capture. You must capture the person within the painting, right? You must capture it. And it is a delicate art. And I think that's another reason why I like it. I like it a lot because it's a delicate art. Alrighty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Jastrock is asking, how do you make the brush lighter versus darker? Is there a hotkey for it? Oh, as far as... Oh! You're probably talking about how I'm painting like the skin over here and then I'm painting like like that, right? Uh, what I'm doing actually is uh, I'm alt clicking. So when you're painting with your brush and then you hold alt, it automatically pulls up your eyedropper tool. So basically that's how I blend. I'll take like this red here and be like, ooh, I like that. And I'll just start kind of blending in, lightly pressing. And then I'll grab like this lighter color. And I'll kind of come in there and do that thing, all right? Stuff like that. So that's all, that's all you see me doing. And the hotkey for that is, like I said, alt. Just hit Alt while you're while you're painting using the paintbrush, and it will pull it up. Pull it up. All right. So speaking of reflected light, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this side of the face too. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that, and that'll create a nice line. All right. This is like lines without them having to be there, and this shows the face turning the other way because now the reflected light is now affecting this side of the face. Brilliant. Brilliant! Cute little cheeks. And yeah, like I said, pigment on the cheeks, just like making them kind of pinkish, always makes your characters look a lot cuter. So do it! Do it and don't question it. Because if you do, you are wrong! <laughs> I'm going to add in some more red to here as well. And basically all I'm doing to add red is, look, I'm just clicking that. Go over to your little color picker. And then you go, red, 
more red, slightly more red. Right? You don't go all the way to the right. Don't do that. Don't do that. I will find you. Hmm. Yes, I do like it. And there's something that I do want to do with this when we're done. I want to add that cool like anime uh, breathing strip on the nose. See if that makes you look cooler. Because there was one rendition of this girl that I drew with like a breathing strip, and I thought it was pretty sweet. So we might just revisit that. Might just revisit that idea. I need to round this nose. Another thing you want to stay away from is don't do this. Don't make the nose, like put one flat color down with the nose, unless that's the style that you're doing. Because it'll make it look like it's flat, like a popsicle stick. You know what I mean? Try to make sure you round it. Get that specular just like right there. And you'll be good to go. Good to go. But yes, um, going back to alt clicking. Yes, this is the way to blend. The way to blend. The way to the promised land. That's the way that I do it. And I'm actually working constantly on, or I'm working completely on uh, one layer at this point. And I, I find it much, much easier to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay. Good. I feel like this character is coming into its own, right? I feel like we're starting to capture the original character that we wanted here. Really, really liking that. So, yeah, you can see here all the just the subtleties, right? You squint your eyes and you still see the same character. It's just kind of brought out. It's kind of more filled in. Feels really good. I like it. I like it when things work, especially on the air. Makes me really happy. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and put a little bit more pigment into the lips, too. A bit more. Just a tad. Especially on this, this bottom lip. I love playing around with just like lip shapes. Like, just from different angles, it's amazing. Like, if you just look at this lip shape, it's like this little thin thing, and then it kind of comes up and then down, and it does that thing, right? If you were to draw that shape, you know, it looks kind of weird, right? But in the right angle, in the right perspective, it works! And that makes me very, very happy, as you can tell. I always like putting, like, a tiny little, you know, dimple there, just a little indentation of the mouth. Subtleties, my friends, subtleties. And I'm sure you guys will and can or already know them. And again, the way that I got to this point where I can just draw faces like this, not saying I'm all high and mighty, but you know, it just takes time. You know, it takes time and it takes practice. It takes study. And it takes interest. Alright, because up until I don't know, like right before I started working at Riot, I didn't care about drawing realistic people. You give a crap, you know? Couldn't give less of a crap. And, uh, oh, actually, look at that. There's a slight change that we made there. In the lips. Uh, yeah, I could give less of a crap about drawing realistic people. But, um, once I saw the splashes for Riot, and I was like, man, I really want to be able to draw stuff like this. I, um, you know, I got inspired, right? I got inspired, especially after seeing Katie DeSouza's work. She's one of the splash artists that still currently works at Riot. And, um, yeah, I just realized, yeah, it's time to step it up. Time to step it up and learn how to draw real people. Stylized real people, right? Because that's kind of what uh, Riot does. I like that stuff. Making sure we're not losing the character in the lips. Good. Good, very good. Lips are very, very important to me. Gotta make sure you get them right. Uh, that's too much pigment on the bottom lip. I don't like too much pigment on the bottom lip. I almost like it to look glossy, but not like lipstick, you know? So you want to kind of take it easy on that. Take it easy there. Yes, yes, yes. How long have you been going for? Going for about 30 minutes. I'm probably going to continue for the next 10 minutes and just continue painting. Uh, any questions, any and all questions, pl please feel free to ask them in the chat to your right. And uh, yeah, I'll answer them. Any questions you may have. Also, um, one thing I want to ask you guys is um, I was kind of thinking 
twice about doing this daily because like first of all I didn't know exactly what it was gonna be about you know what's the lesson plan it's like hey let's draw let's paint this chick right but um, you know later I was like okay well let's, let's talk about like capturing that original character right capturing the original character that you have in a sketch but um, I just didn't know if it, this was too uh, too specialized of a daily or a uh, tutorial I don't know if it's too specialized like for those of you wanting to just I don't know learn how to draw cartoons or whatever like this might not apply to you so uh, please let me know how you feel about stuff like this like drawing people if you enjoy it we can definitely do more of it if you like the more simple tutorials where we focus on specific things like hey this is drawing you know the torso this is how you draw arms and feet and stuff like that then we can stick with those more of those and we'll do these only once in a great while but I personally enjoy doing these I personally like doing them but um, yeah like I said I just I hope that you guys are learning from it, right? Instead of just watching me paint, you know, because that's probably not very fun. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just worrying too much. Maybe I'm thinking too much about it. You think too much. You think too much. Shut up. Shut up and paint. Shut up. These are the things I tell myself. All right. Uh, that I looks a little uh, ski wampus. I can't believe I just used that word. <laughs> ski wampus. And uh, this is another thing that I like to do. I like to cover the eye. You can't see me doing this. But I'll cover the eye, like one eye, and figure out which one I like more. Like which one of these eyes do I like more? And then I'll make sure to match the other one to it. And I'm liking her left eye more. So I want to make sure that I match that. So the biggest thing that I need to do to match this eye is I need to push this one more this way. Just a tad bit more that way. Ooh, that looks good. Looks really good. Really, really, really good. Really good. But yeah, today's has been a good day. It's been a good day. Good day of work. You know what I mean? It's 2634 rule, man. It's just rocking my world. Rocking my world. Probably going to be talking about this in depth on Thursday because I really want you guys to put this into practice in your life and have a change for the better. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Let us see here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Z were princessin is asking, <laughs> lips are really hard for me. I always end up with a pouty duck face. <laughs> Any tips? Um, well, it's interesting because, I mean, the lips that I'm drawing here are kind of like, you know, pouty, duck facey, but at least they're not like too, like, you know, like pushed out. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing that, that helps me with avoiding the duck face is, I don't even know exactly how to put it. I don't know exactly how to put it. I think the biggest thing, actually, here, here's a good, here's a good example. I think the biggest thing that, that tells me where the lips are in relation to the face is actually how it relates to the nose. You'll notice like if I were to draw like a line art version of what's happening over here, the nose is existing right here, right? And then it goes up. And then the lips are come down right here with the little angel's fingerprint, whatever that thing's called. And then the lips are sitting back in space, right? Just by just by comparison, right? Now, um, I'm really trying my best to illustrate this. <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, this is in perspective, okay? So think about it like this. Okay, so pay attention to how the lips are set back into the face, right? Now, here's what possibly may be happening. If you were to take these lips and you were to move them out like this, now they start to appear like they're sticking out, right? Because in order for these lips to exist here, the, the mouth would basically have to be like this, right? The chin would be here, and then the, the, you know, the rest of the face would be there. And then you got these lips that are sticking out like, mm, like that. That might be something that you're doing. So just pay attention to where the lips are in relationship to the nose, right? And this is something that's always, uh, this has always been a big challenge for me too, because something that I always used to do was, I used to make the face really, really flat. And I used to make the noses really, really long really really long noses and they didn't like come out right they were almost like teehee faces 
So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, try that out, and uh, hopefully that helps. That is my wisdom to you. We'll see if it's worth a crap or not. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More, more questions coming in here. Um, Jastrock is asking, do you like sketching on the computer as opposed to in a sketchbook? Um, when I'm drawing faces like this, when I'm sketching faces like this, yes, I absolutely love working in Photoshop because I get this really cool, uh, I get the really cool chalk brush, right? So it makes it really easy to just like start throwing in these shapes and you saw in the time lapse, you know, it's really, really easy for me to just quickly throw in values of a person, right? And just get the character in place and be like, yes, this is what it's supposed to be. Um, I like doing sketches in my sketchbook as well, but um, I feel like I feel like you get like action poses. Remember, like I was talking about earlier before, when you're drawing a character doing some sort of action, and I, don't know, I just feel like it's a lot easier to flow with like a real physical piece of paper and a, and a pencil. So um, yeah, but for drawing people and faces, I really really like doing it like this. In fact, I haven't done a lot of sketches of people in a sketchbook, so who knows, maybe if I spent more time with it, or if I use like a graphite pencil, I could probably do something similar to this. But um, I also just like working with color. It's really hard to paint with color immediately, you know, after you're done sketching on a sketchbook. So um, yes, continuing. I'll take a couple more questions and then we're going to end. In the meantime, epic outro music. All right, next question coming in is from hmm. uh, Masani. Masani is asking, do you think I should use my time to draw in Photoshop or go to college for traditional painting? I'm guessing. Uh, oh, no, no. He's saying go to college. Uh, go to college for traditional painting if I would like to work at Riot in the future. Oh, this is a great question. Great question, Masani. Um, I would say definitely like traditional painting is awesome and you can learn a lot of cool techniques and color theory and all that stuff. But really, the truth of the matter is, is that once you get into the industry, it's all about Photoshop. It's all about just efficiency and it's much quicker to just get a painting down digitally than to sit at home and be like, okay, here's the canvas, working with these paints, gotta let it dry, gotta make sure you know all this stuff, take care of all the materials. It's just like you don't have time to do that. And uh, it might be like a cool side project, but as far as splashes and advertising art, doing stuff like that, it's all about using Photoshop and digital media. So I would definitely say, look out for that. All right, last question I'm going to take is coming from Anthony Coffee. <laughs> He's saying he has he has this shirt. Oh, that's more of a statement than a question. <laughs> Last question coming in from Taft Thompson. He's asking about the picture resolution that I'm using. Great question, Taft. Let's find out. I think for this tutorial, I actually purposely use a lower resolution, uh, just so that way um, it's easier to work with. But I usually go with a ratio of 16 by 9, because that's usually kind of like the nice widescreen format. And if I end up liking a painting that I, I've done, it's like, hey, it makes a cool wallpaper all of a sudden. So uh, I really like working with that. But as you can see here, it's 16 by 9, and I only did 150 resolution. I would recommend you do at least 300 resolution, right, for whatever you're doing. Because um, it's just a really, I don't know, I just feel like it's a perfect, it's a perfect resolution. And it just feels good, and you can zoom in, not be, have it be all digitalized and all nasty and everything, and you can zoom out and have it still look nice. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and end episode 92 of the Can Kale Show. Thank you guys once again for joining me live on Ustream. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. I'll see you tomorrow for whatever Wednesday. You guys take care of yourself, and I'll see you then.